Hey, this is Dr. K from my medical school, and today's lesson is ABGs Made Easy. So let's begin. ABGs, otherwise known as arterial blood gases, allow us to measure a patient's oxygen and carbon dioxide in their arterial blood. With these values, we can identify metabolic and respiratory acid and base disturbances. Being able to interpret ABGs is a highly tested subject, so you really need to know this if you're entering the medical field. So let's go over some easy steps to interpret ABGs. Step one, first calculate the anion gap. The anion gap is the chloride plus bicarbonate, taking that sum and subtracting it from the sodium from the chemistry. This is called the anion gap. Remember, the bicarb that you use in this equation is from the chemistry and not the ABG because the bicarb that appears on an ABG is actually an estimate and not the actual bicarb of the patient. Step 2. Calculate the change in anion gap. We will assume a normal anion gap is 10. Thus, you take your previously calculated anion gap in step 1 and subtract 10 from that to get your change in anion gap. If this change is around positive 3 or greater, then you have an anion gap metabolic acidosis. Step 3. Calculate the expected bicarb. So your expected bicarb can be calculated by taking 25 minus the change in anion gap. Once you've calculated the expected bicarb, we can now move to step 4. In step 4, we will compare the actual bicarbonate to expected bicarbonate levels. If your actual bicarbonate, that is the bicarbonate from the chemistry, is greater than the expected bicarbonate, then you have a metabolic alkalosis. If the actual bicarbonate is less than the expected bicarbonate, then you have a non-anion gap metabolic acidosis. Now let's move to step 5. In step 5 we calculate the expected CO2. The expected CO2 equals 15 plus the actual bicarbonate. That means the bicarbonate from the chemistry. When you have the expected CO2 you can move to step 6. In step 6 we compare the actual CO2 to the expected CO2. If the actual CO2 is greater than the expected CO2, then you have a respiratory acidosis. If the actual CO2 is less than the expected CO2, then you have a respiratory alkalosis. Now let's move to step 7. Step 7 brings everything together. Basically, you compare the acid-base disorders you came up with and make sure they're consistent with the pH on the ABG. Whichever acid-base disorder is consistent with your pH, that is the likely primary disorder. Now, we have went over these seven steps. Let's try to do an example just to make the idea more concrete. Try to work through the following example. Here we have ABG results with a pH of 7.1, a PO2 of 60, a PCO2 of 15, a chemistry with a sodium of 135, potassium of 3.8, chloride of 105, and CO2 of 7. Pause here and try to identify the acid and base disturbances present. Then in a few seconds we'll go over it together. Remember, to go through each step, making sure you're making the correct calculations, and identifying each disorder along the way. Now let's go over this together. The anion gap is calculated by taking 105 plus 7, which equals 112, and then taking 135 minus 112. So anion gap is 23. The changed anion gap is the anion gap minus 10. So here, 23 minus 10 is 13. Now, given that the change in anion gap is 13, we know that there is a anion gap metabolic acidosis present. Now let's look at the expected bicarb. So to calculate the expected bicarb, you take 25 minus the change in anion gap. That equals 25 minus 13, which equals 12. So expected bicarb is 12. 
Our actual bicarb we take from the chemistry, and that's 7. So our actual bicarb is less than our expected bicarb. So we also have a non-anion gap metabolic acidosis. Now, let's try to calculate our expected CO2. Our expected CO2 is 15 plus our actual bicarb. So 15 plus 7 is 22. Given the actual CO2 is 15, which is less than our expected, we have a respiratory alkalosis present as well. So we have an anion gap metabolic acidosis, a non-anion gap metabolic acidosis, and a respiratory alkalosis. We have a triple disorder that we're able to figure out in seven easy steps. So if you like this video, give it a like. If you have any comments, make some comments down below. And most importantly, subscribe. This is Dr. K from my medical school, and I'll see you next time.